Um, I stopped playing Street Fighter V when the game came out because I love the game a lot more than everything else I was playing at the time. I've been kind of on a bit of a hiatus recently, right? There's been very little activity for me in terms of community coordination, um, but I've been watching. And what I've been seeing is that everybody is excited about DX. And I've been watching Twitter too. And everybody is interested because of DX. In an honest opinion, the community both grew and then shrank and then grew again. Uh, initially grew because a lot of players started coming into the game when the free game first came out and was like, oh, a Pokemon fighting game. It was really huge. And in fact, it showed at Evo there was like over a thousand entrants for the game. So there was early interest. And then as it came on, it kind of started dwindling down. There was not much around. But then there was people saw that there was a scene that the community existed. And the Evo drive also showed that that community really existed. So as much as I you know, didn't really like the drive itself, the drive boosted the community where, community where it is today. Um, so that's where it kind of grew at a point, sort of the, the growing times. Uh, tournaments started getting a little bigger, people started traveling a little bit more, people had a drive. And that's what Pokémon didn't have before. And now after DX, it kind of got that new spark, that new, a lot of new players are like, man, this game looks nice. Well, since when I started at least, it's going a lot, obviously. When I started out, it was just so online warrior. I played it for like two months straight, literally sit in the back house of my place to play at play the game for like six hours straight every single day. I never thought once like I'd be able to go out to a tournament and like play with people, human people. And when I got a chance to do that, all I've been seeing is just like a great influx of like great people joining the community. There's acceptance of people who they are, like who they are as a person. And I really like that because if it wasn't for that, I don't know what I'd be doing right now. I haven't been in the community since day one and not an active competitor but at this point I have been in it for quite a while and where we are today compared to where we were when I joined is a huge difference uh, the amount of people attending tournaments the amount of people watching the streams the amount of people um, watching the community streams streaming themselves is huge, right? Like, there's all every night you can see someone cool streaming Pokémon. Pre day zero, I felt like, and by pre day zero, I mean before the initial launch of the Wii U version. Everyone was really hyped about the game. I used to do commentary videos off of Japanese footage that was provided to us to watch uh, through YouTube and stuff like that, Nico Nico, and just off of 
seeing the numbers with those, they were in the like, you know, 10,000s, 100,000s in viewers alone. Going into the game, I felt like this was going to be super popular amongst a lot of people. I and mean, obviously once it hit the shelves, they flew off, everyone was playing, everyone was hype. A lot of other people from like Smash Bros was playing it and then, you know, after a couple months, it kind of like quieted down a little bit. But then, like, you know, once, you know, we got closer to, like, you know, NEC and any of the tournaments that happened before, it kind of picked back up again. It was like a slow rise again, but that's why I'm saying, like, it took a little bit of silence to make us loud again, if that makes any sense. Like, with this tournament, there were a few people who came in and, um, and you know, signed up. It was, it was a free sign up here, but they came in and signed up and said, yeah, I'm going to play Pokemon Tournament. DX when that comes out because it looks really fun and I'm glad we're getting more people because the game is really fun It's really solid um, and it it gets not necessarily a bad rap, but it's underappreciated um, With with how well with how well the, the game runs and everything like that is underappreciated So I'm glad that more more and more people are getting into it. I personally feel like the community hasn't grown as much Instead, I feel like it we've become closer, you know through all the tournaments and all the events and stuff, everybody traveling here, there, and everywhere, the people that have stuck with the game since day one have definitely gotten to know each other much better. And it's less of a community and more of a family at this point. And we're very welcoming and willing to adopt more kids in this in this uh, analogy. It definitely doesn't seem to have grown much bigger, but with DX coming out, there's, there's so much potential for it. And I'm so excited for all the new blood coming in and we're just gonna teach them and take care of them. A lot of people, like people didn't want to play Pokemon at first because no one wants to buy a Wii U just for Pokemon. That was a huge investment for a console that was on its way out. Now it's on, you know, Switch, a console that's flying off the shelves faster than it can get on. So people want, people want games for it. And early on, it's gonna be one of the first few games for it before like Mario comes out. It's just like something that people want to try, something new. After everyone got through the Splatoon, everyone ever got through, you know, the Zelda. It's just something new, so even if they're not going to stay, it's the initial interest and maybe we can keep them. I think that's tough in some ways because, you know, we started off not being a community at all. Um, and really quickly, there was this, this sort of spirit early on, um, especially talking about like DreamHack Austin, like I was saying, that everyone wanted, I, it felt like everyone wanted to be the best and didn't want to share tech um, and wanted to prove they were already the best and had been for a long time, which is this weird mindset to be in for a game that's just come out. Um, but I think it's partially because so many of us are, are competitive people who want to prove ourselves. And it was cool to me to watch how quickly the negative parts of that faded away um, and the good parts of that sort of rose up. And then this other whole span of like wanting to lift everyone up became such a fundamental part of the community. I think when we realized that Pokken wasn't gonna be necessarily everyone's favorite game, but it was ours. I think it became apparent really quickly that we all wanted, that, that, that it was special and we were lucky to have found each other and that everyone wanted to play. Um, so that was really cool watching that happen. Like we're so lucky that there's, there's really like multiple communities. We're all, you know, like regionally, nationally and internationally. And there's so many healthy communities that all talk. Um, and I think we're really lucky that we, for at least for 1.3 that we've been the size we are because we're a real community. You know, like other games are, they're lucky, they're awesome, they have huge communities, but they're not, re they're imaginary communities because you can't know everyone. But in Pokemon, at least thus far, you can know everyone. And that's really cool. That's special, I think. I definitely feel like it's been growing significantly, uh, especially now, since DX was announced. I think that was the biggest thing. Once DX was announced, I started seeing new people in streams. I started seeing new people in the discords. Um, me personally, I started using the discord more. I used to just sort of have it and look, but I never actually talked. Now I'm starting to use it a lot more. Um, people are coming up with, people are always coming up with new tech and trying to push the game as much as they can. I see it getting advertised a lot more. Getting a season two is huge, and I hopeful, I'm hoping for a season three as well. So um, I'm looking forward to what the future holds, especially with DX. It's definitely grown in the sense that we're more together because we've got to know each other a lot better. And, uh, you know, we're able to have like conversations, just keep helping each other get better as players, you know, as people. And I, I think that type of strength will help bring in more new players, too, when they see, like, you know, how, how well together this community is. And it'll just keep growing and growing. The only thing I have to say is the excitement is there. 
and the community is rallying around this. Uh, they see it as a huge opportunity because it is an opportunity. We have the five new characters coming in. I'm going to be picking up two of them. So um, immediately out the gate, we were a huge community. Everybody was excited for Pokken. And then it, in about two months, all the hype for the game died out. I was very sad to watch a lot of my good friends uh, from Pokken slowly leaving the community. But after about five or six months, when we really hit our low, we've slowly been growing back up uh, to the numbers we're getting now. So we're getting pretty good numbers. We get about the same amount as Guilty Gear. Um, when DX comes out, there's a lot of hype for the game between uh, not so much the old fighting game community that like we were expecting to draw from, but there's a lot of hype between the new Nintendo community who's revolving around the Switch. Um, there's going to be a lot of people who, let's say they bought the Switch because they wanted to play Breath of the Wild and they're looking for something else to play. Those are the people who we need to be aiming for, for Pokken, just as another casual game that they can bring on. It's very easy to pick up. And I feel those are the people who will be able to pull in and maybe bring to some tournaments and have a lot of fun with. With the announcement of DX Onward, there has just been an astronomical amount of growth again, right? And it makes me really, really excited because it seems like from like November until now, we've only been getting bigger and bigger and bigger and better. And so I'm, I'm really, really hyped to see where we go in the next couple years. Especially where we're at now, I feel like going into DX, I feel like the sky is literally the limit and we'll probably even go beyond that. There's new play styles, there's new interesting interactions that you have to learn. It's almost like a restart, right? But at the same time, it's not quite a restart. If you've already been involved, you're going to be ahead of the game. So kind of the most important thing is if you're going to get into DX, I think you want to start studying the current game because there's obviously balance updates, but there's new characters. And so once day one hits, everybody's going to be trying out those new characters. So that's going to be when you want to get involved too because you just get to, you get to see how the meta grows. And that keeping up with the meta is very important in this game. <laughs> That's an interesting question. Mm. What does Pokin mean to me? And Pokin means making your childhood dreams come true with uh, wanting to be a Pokemon master. <laughs> Everything. Like, it gave me a new outlook on life, be more acceptable towards people. The friends I made are irreplaceable in this community, like, straight up. If I was, like, never playing Pokken and I was just sitting in my back house playing with the same five friends that I do, that's what I'd be doing right now. I wouldn't be going to Arizona. I wouldn't be going to Canada. I wouldn't be going to Japan. I wouldn't go to Las Vegas. I wouldn't go to London that I'm going to soon. It means so much to me and I'm so grateful that this game came out because if it wasn't for this game I don't know I simply don't know to me po Pokken I mean it is, it is a fighting game that is that is what it is but it's like the community I've seen because I've you know played Smash I played Street Fighter I played Guilty Gear and I've seen all you know sides of uh, FGC I've never seen one as like tightly knit as Pokken more and more like Random Joe number five is like we'll have a conversation with like Thulius or Ross and Ryu or even like Roxo, Oreo, Catfight. Like they'll, they'll just talk, like can talk to them, and you'll just have a conversation. Like you wouldn't you wouldn't think of going to like Evo and just starting like have a straight up a conversation with like Punk or Daigo or um, Infiltration. You wouldn't think that you can do that. But in Pokemon, it's just a lot more like homely, a lot more friendly. They can just like talk to a top player and they'll just tell you something. No one will really kind of shoot you down for being not a good player. Oh God, that's tough. I think Pokemon's been really cool because it's been an opportunity to test sort of my creative problem solving skills. It's been a source of finding awesome new friends. You know, I've moved a bunch in the last few years and had some like rough stuff going on in my life and Pokemon's always been an awesome escape. And I think that's the answer that you get up from a lot of people. Everything, it really does. Pokemon has been such a big part of my life, even growing up and I remember my early days of playing Pokemon and when Ruby and Sapphire came out and having the Game Boy SP, 
playing it under the covers in bed and with the light. Pokemon Tournament was basically like a dream come true for me. It's something I've always ma imagined Pokemon fighting in this kind of style. I always pictured it and, um, and dreamed of it in my head and to see it realized and to be able to control it and, and just write your own story with this game is, is what it's come down to is because we make a joke of it but Pokken is anime. Everybody has a storyline, everybody has an arc and following everybody's stories it's, it's really cool to go back look at all the footage and see how far the game has really come in such a short amount of time. Pokken really means the world to me. It's a community. Um, it's more than a game for me because I've met so many cool people through this game and I've gotten chances to do stuff I never would have dreamed of in my entire lifetime. Like, for an example, I'm going to England in a few months to play a video game. Like, who else can say that? <laughs> um, so that's one of the coolest things about it for me. And then I've met so many good people in the community through this game. Um, friends that I'm going to have for hopefully a lifetime. Um, and I, I couldn't be happier playing it. Man, that's a, uh, that's a deep question, right? This is the first truly competitive community that I've been involved in. You know, I've done things prior, right? Like, I kind of, Smash is how I kind of got started in the fighting game community. Um, before that, you know, I would play FPSs. Um, I would, like, watch Halo and that kind of thing. But this is the first time that I've been heavily involved. So to me, it's like I was able to turn a hobby into something more. Pokin, I gotta say, has a really, really big special part in my heart. Being a tournament organizer, a commentator, content creator, I kind of, you know, have my hands in just about everything and I gotta say I've never been a part of a more loving appreciative community ever in my life before I've been involved in other communities in the past things can change and things can happen it's not like with them Pokken has truly shown a set a good example for what it is like to put as much effort in and then receive it back it's weird, a lot of people who play Pokemon, I think, are a little bit older compared to what people expected. And I think in some ways, and I, I don't think it's like nostalgic and like pining for like a simpler time, um, like, what Pokemon, like what Pokemon might seem to some people. Um, but for me, it's just, yeah, been this awesome creative sync and escape, like partially with like making graphics as creative, but also I think in its gameplay, it has tons of room for creativity. Ohana. Uh, these people I've met through Pokken are my family. Um, it's like my home away from home, so I'll go to school um, and I just kind of, I'll sit at my computer and I just wait for people to get online who, uh, you know, I've been talking to, I have a great time with all these guys. These are just people who I never expected that I would get so close to and who would bring me into the rest of the FGC and they have. So. They're just amazing people, and that's what it is to me. Pokken has done a lot for me. Uh, for years and years and years, ever since I was like 12 or 13 years old, I've been watching competitive fighting games, right? I've been, I've been a fan of the, the fighting game world. I've been, you know, watching EVO, watching CEO, following my top players. Uh, and now, inexplicably, I have found myself, because of Pokken, on the other end of the screen, you know? Like, on the stage, instead of watching the people on the stage, right? Hearing people type my name in the chat, instead of typing someone else's name in the chat. It's a little crazy, um, but it's also super, super fun. I've met so many wonderful friends through Pokken uh, every month. Uh, when I come to one of these big tournaments and I walk into the door and see everybody hanging out, it makes me so happy. My beloved girlfriend who bought me Pokken in the first place, this has been something great that the two of us have been doing together for a really long time. Uh, she's helped me stream, like because of Pokken I've been streaming and I've met a bunch of people through my stream that I really like hanging out with. So it's been a really important part of my life and it's going to continue to be an important part of my life I think. Uh, and I hope so, because really it's just, it's a great game, it's a great community, it's just, it's, it's good, it's good. <laughs>
I stopped playing Street Fighter V when the game came out because I love the game a lot more than everything else I was playing at the time. And then uh, when I learned that a scene was developing in uh, New York and the tri-state area, then I didn't want to like stop competing in locals. Like I wanted to just keep going out and helping the players get better because I I, I knew like from the jump that like, you know they're they're not experienced fighting game players, but I could work with them. I could build up you know the community, and you know since then. Like everybody's shown like how much stronger and how much better they became. And like, that made me really happy to see that I helped build a scene, you know, from the ground up. And that that's that's more than anything I've probably ever wanted with the game. I could lose everything from now on and I could see everybody else from my region win and that'll make me happy. I've done community videos for the poking community, I've done the vlogs. I've done all, all, the, all sorts of content. I'm just trying to just be a, as an entertaining commentator as I possibly can. And I gotta say, like, you know, I've gotten a lot of great buzz, great feedback, you know, people appreciate it. I mean, not, you know, not everyone can take Uchi too much. You know, too much is, I don't know. But when it comes down to it, I've done things that I probably haven't done in the past, or at least tried to have for other communities like I have for this one, because this community deserves every single drop and effort support that I've thrown at them just because they're like that with me and anybody else that shows the same amount of effort and love. So it's like, it's a two-way street relationship, not about this one-way life. With that being said, Pokin means the world and more to your boy. It's not a living right now. Um, it's not a lifestyle yet, but it's something more than a hobby. It's, it's not just, I do this for fun, it's I do this because I'm part of a community now, I'm part of something bigger, and I have fun doing it. I interact with people, I have friends in this community, and we, we help each other grow, we help each other through hard times, we have a lot of fun. It's just, it means, I don't know how to put it in words, but it means a lot. I think whenever a new game comes out, there's a lot of negativity, um, and not because, not necessarily for malice or anything, but just because people don't think it can succeed. And I think with DX, people are going to see that we're we're here to stay. Whether like, and I don't think people ever wanted us to go anywhere, right? They just thought like, oh, this is a passing fancy. Um, and I think DX proves that that's not the case. That it's not a passing fancy. That we're serious about the game. The game's deep. It's interesting. It has legs, um, and we're going to be running with it for a long time. I think our ability to show, yes, we just want to play our game, uh, we'll bring our own consoles if we have to, um, I think other communities do respect that. They're like, okay, uh, if these guys want a spot at the tournament, that's fine. They can take that spot. Uh, we'll give them the space. So it's like with ARMS. You know, ARMS does take a while, but people enjoy the game uh, and nobody really hates on the game you know that's that's what I, the vibe I get from the game like I'll go over there and I'll mess with the people who are running it I'm like oh nobody likes arms but you know everybody who's like playing the game they're always happy you know they're having a good time and I think people who are at tournaments are able to see oh they're enjoying their game I have my own things that I want to do so I'm gonna go enjoy my game and I'm gonna leave them alone I'm hoping it would uh... The only issue, which is always an issue with Nintendo, is consoles, because it's, it's so hard to afford. Like, if I had to be completely honest with you, I'm not, I'm not gonna buy DX day one. Probably not even month one. I'm gonna be a part of every event, of course. But it is a very difficult game to get into for that number one big reason. You know what? I really do think that it will, because. It's gonna just be one of those things that you're gonna see at a lot of events, I feel like, nowadays. And even including those that may not have Pokken as a, as a mainstream game, I feel like because of its accessibility now, and now that it's on a brand new console within its first year of being launched, I feel like this game is going to basically show itself off just based on how pe how many people are carrying it around with them. You know, we don't have to worry about having our Wii U's no more because a Switch is basically like a grown-up 3DS. 
You know, it's like it's like another handheld, but and it's not at the same time. That's what that's what Nintendo did a great job on. So good looks. I definitely feel like it's gonna just be all positive, and it's gonna we're gonna take off with it. As far as the other communities go, it's gonna be tough to say. I know at first we tried to reach out to more of the Smash community and they kind of didn't want much of a part in it, but a lot of the growth came from the Smash community. It's a very interesting dynamic. I feel like a lot of people are going to be like, oh, Nintendo fighting game, uh, whatever. If you pick up a controller and you play the game, you'll see that there's way more than you would think there is on the surface level. A lot of people say, oh, it's RPS heavy. I mean, sure, it can be, but that's just one part of the game. That's just one mechanic of the game you know there's so much to it there's so much and any FGC veteran can see that this is a real fighting game and this is something that should be taken fairly seriously I'd say so with the with the user base for the switch uh, being uh, coming up to be higher than the Wii U and being easier to be able to play the game competitively and non-competitively because you'll always have the system with you. I think it's going to be even bigger than it was before. So I'm glad they went with the decision to put it on the Switch and I really hope it grows. Oh man. DX. Okay. There's a lot to say about Pokémon DX. Basically, I think it's going to be a whole new universe for Pokémon because Everybody who's played this game pretty much knows that it's like a great fighting game. I think so. Um, I'm hopeful, definitely. Uh, I think that as DX comes out and as we move forward, um, a lot more people are going to be coming through just to like see what the game is all about. And if we can push to retain those new people um, and get them more interested in the game, the game is just going to slowly grow out and expand. And moving from that point, I think that it's going to be a good thing for the game. Once DX comes out, I just see us slowly like shooting up, you know? Again, seeing other communities, Pokémon's downfall is why they don't really see them, like people see them as a community, but just the sheer size isn't the, isn't the best, but it is growing and once DX comes out, those numbers will grow bigger and I'll be like, oh, there's the scene coming out. Maybe we'll finally have the breakout. Like, Tekken was like there, but it wasn't until Tekken 7, it just sort of like exploded. Or is it Tekken Tag 2? One of those two just sort of like exponentially grew. And I want Pokémon DX to sort of like give us that sort of bump to like, ah, now we got a bunch of people. Now we have main stage at events. Now people just see us in the background. We won't just be like, you know, at a corner, you know, corner stream setup. We'll not actually be like somewhere a little bigger, a little more main. And people will just see it and gets bigger and bigger as time goes on. The biggest thing with DX is the interest that it's, it's garnering. I think it will catch attention from other communities because there's, right now it seems like there's a lot of small communities paying attention to a lot of other small communities. Like the anime community is kind of paying attention to more things now. Um, our community is paying attention to more things now. There's, people are starting to branch out. Um, and I think that that doesn't necessarily have to do with DX. That's just people are starting to see, okay, there's, there's opportunities and there's lots of fun that can be had and I'm really enjoying this and all, the, all these people with these common interests, right? And DX is another rallying point for those people to come together. So I think, it's, I think DX is big for that reason because we're a community, there's people looking to expand their, their social connections. Um, and you know, there's just people who don't know each other that they'll find people who they'll get along with really well. And I think that that's what DX is ultimately gonna do. It's gonna help get more people who have common interests to, to come together and grow as, a, grow as a whole community. Like not just the Pokin FGC, but it's going to help FGC as a whole come together. The problems with Pokémon don't come from the game itself. The things that it's struggled with have been from outside. And the biggest one is that it's stuck on a console that like no fighting game player owns, right? And you need two of them to play anything offline, right? The fact that Pokémon is coming to the, the Switch, which is a vastly more popular console than the Wii U ever was, 
um, that a lot of people already own and will buy, right, because there are great games on the Switch other than just Pokken. I'll think it'll be more accepted amongst other communities because it's on the Switch, more portable, more new, people like new things. It'll definitely be more of an interest to play because people who played Pokken on a Wii U will probably have experienced like a fun time with it and like you can possibly see how deep the game is as in and like the technicalities behind it and like what it is, like how deep it is. And now with the new Switch with DX, hopefully people reminisce about those good times that they had playing with and actually like try to be a part of the community with a new console, new di like new Discord chats that are now popping up. The fact that the Switch is more portable, the fact that uh, you can still do LAN if you want, but you can also do split screen if you want to do like a smaller local, right? Like you have options with the Switch that you never had with the Wii U. And those options, I think, are going to give so many more people an opportunity to play this game, and I think they're going to love it. So like, it's only going to be good news. Only going to be good news. I'm not entirely sure. I'd like to stay at a consistent top level, um, just you know, continuing to go forward and forward and forward. A sponsorship would be nice, but you know, I'm happy, you know, just competing and staying in the game. I don't, um, I don't plan on making this a full-time thing, unless something crazy happened in the future. I have a full-time career. I have a full-time job, so this is a, a hobby that I really enjoy doing, um, and I want to keep it at that for this moment right now. But who knows what the future holds, you know? Surprise! I may want to, like, I, I do want to compete, obviously. Like, I love competing, and I'm good at it, luckily, for some odd reason, because I thought I'd never be good at anything. I'm looking into TOing more, or maybe possibly running, like, a team or crew, or maybe an eSport organization. I really want to try, like, doing TOing, because I feel as though I could run a good tournament. After being, like, around so many greatly run tournaments and then really poorly run tournaments, and then everything in between that with like stream setups, vendors, and all that stuff. Like I feel like I could do a good job at TOing. But as far as like competing, obviously I'm gonna compete. Like I love that. I love it too much. Hopefully up. <laughs> I mean that's that's the goal, right? I've definitely come a long way from when I started playing this game last year, right? I spent a lot of time as a random scrub. I went 0 and 2 in my first local tournament. It took seven minutes for me to get knocked out. <laughs> it was it was really quick. <laughs> it was two sweet coons, you know. Like I, uh, uh, now here I am. So despite that, I really don't think I'm anywhere near how good I could be. I I feel like I have only just scratched the surface of what my character can do and what I can do as a player. So I feel just as enthusiastic about Pokémon as I did on day one, if not more so. The community is growing, so it's not like I'm going to run out of tournaments to go to. And as I get older, I'll have more opportunity to go. So I'm definitely not planning on going anywhere. And I am really hoping that I can just continue to, to grow myself and put on a good show after every tournament. I have to take a dip for Pokken due to personal reasons in the next coming months. Um, but after that, if the community is still strong and we're all together playing, um, I should be able to come right back, enjoy you know, that family that I'm a part of, be welcomed right back, hopefully with open, loving arms, and then just have a great time. You know, I find the, ga the game is supposed to be fun. It's, you play to win, but you play more so to have fun, and that's what I'm here for. I'm not really sure about that. Um, I just plan to play it, and I don't see myself getting tired of it at all. So wherever I can go, whenever I can do it, I just plan to play it. I mean, the, uh, I hope to you know, keep doing everything that I can to help grow the community, making graphics, making content, trying to be a vocal supporter of the game on social media. I think that's really important because a lot of times when you have a small community, it's, it's easy to forget that it's important not only to talk to the people in your community, but like-minded people out of the community. Um, and I think when DX comes out, that's going to be so important. It's going to be, there's a lot of people interested in Pokken, and there's a lot of people not interested in Pokken, and we have to find a way to talk about the game to all of them. Honestly, the ultimate goal for me would be commentary at an official Nintendo event, but 
knowing the way that Nintendo likes to run things, I doubt I have a shot in that. I guess my personal goal would be just pretty much to commentate at almost every region that has a Pokémon scene. That's my personal goal, and that's my dream. I've already been heavily involved with a lot of the back, the backdoor stuff. Just just off of how everything's been going so far, like I said before, with everyone treating me with the utmost respect, love, and appreciation, I see myself being one of the founding fathers of Pokémon. To be completely honest with you, because as far as founding father, I'm not saying like, oh, like I started this community. No, I've been a part of it since day day zero. All right, you can ask Cat Fight, you can ask Roxo, you can ask a lot of people that know exactly what my involvement has been behind the scenes, and even in front of the scenes. You know, I can. I'm, I'm still going to be on the mic, and I will try my hand at competing. Uh, we'll see what Darkrai can do for me. Um, but you know, as far as that goes, I, I, I'm, I'm going to be around. Commentary, actual, actual answer. Um, I mean, as a player, I've been getting better uh, recently, uh, and I want to take that further. But I also want to keep my commentary, you know, up as well. But it's kind of hard to balance the two because if you do well at a tournament, you can't commentate, and it's just sort of like, what do I do? I mean, I get to do something at all times. Either I commentate or I don't. But it gives me a new angle from commentary playing these high, like, level matches that I sort of now feel like more of like the limelight, more of the stress that a lot of the players are getting, and then I'm behind the mic, I can then relay that back that maybe these players, and maybe that wasn't the right decision, but it was the maybe the easiest. You're under pressure, you're jittery, you want to just do something that's like, I want the hit. I don't care if it's not optimal, I just want to put myself back in ad advantage. Maybe that's when I'm on a relay, it's everyone else. So, it, I mean, it, it helps both. Commentary helps my play style. I still have my commentary, so I'm just going to keep both up, up and up. And I think in some ways, as a community, we're going to have to remember how to talk about the game to people who don't play it. Um, and that's something we've sort of forgotten how to do. Um, and we take certain things for granted that we think are easy about the game that aren't. And we, got, we have to, all of us have to learn how to be good teachers, I think. Um, yeah, I'm in an interesting spot, huh, in that regard. Uh, where do I see myself going with Pokémon in the future? So. I started out as a labber, right? That's what everybody knew me as. This guy labs Gardevoir. He knows tons of frame data. He's got like ridiculous setups and all this, that, and the other, right? And then it's like, okay, this guy can play too. He's not just a labber, right? Um, and then I started, you know, just jumping on the mic at various events. Like one of them was, I think, Defend the North maybe last year. I remember Rumble in the Tundra, I think, last year is where I started jumping on the mic. Uh, and since then, the, the past year, it's been interesting. Um, just people like to listen to the things that I say, so... Yeah. Where do I see myself going? I think I'm going towards commentary um, and moving away from being a player, but don't hold me to that. I'll still try and show up in bracket and take some names. That's all I got to say about that, but I, I think I'm possibly moving more towards commentary at this point. I'm gonna just ride to the wheels fall off. Once the game's done, I'm done. You know, once the community's not there anymore, then otherwise I'll still play. Because I actually enjoy, the, I enjoy, I enjoy what I'm doing, so I'm gonna keep doing. Dark Cry, because trap setups. He he's kind of like um, Gardevoir in the trap setup game. But the reveal for Dark Cry really got me hooked to try and play him. The other Pokemon look really, really good too. Um, I was thinking about picking up Scizor, Decidueye, uh, but definitely Darkrai. <laughs> Don't let me. I know. I know. Let me Go finish ahead. the question ask, first. Ask the question. Because I already know. Ask the question. Which new character are you looking to play the most? <sighs> that's a hard one. I think out of all the questions you asked me, I think that's actually the most difficult question. I, I'm gonna have to say uh, Bryson. <laughs> 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 Nah, okay, it's Darkrai. Hello, I've been I've been literally doing so much research on this character ever since he spawned last summer. Not the well, not this recent summer, but last 2016 summer, right? They released him in over in Japan, had him in the arcades. He has always been one of my favorite Pokemon, like overall. All right, next to Charizard and all my other favorites, Darkrai has been always up there, especially because I loved him in fourth gen. I can go on about Darkrai, but realistically, the character just fits me, especially when we went over there to Keivo, uh in Japan over there in Osaka, and we got time to play 
the DX now characters. Darkrai was, we were just like this. None, but I guess if I had to pick one, Scizor, because he's a Gundam. <laughs> That's literally the only reason. Like, I don't know, I played at Japan, quote unquote DLC characters in the arcades, and it was cool. I wish I had more time to lab with it, but obviously not because it's freaking, you know, an arcade system, there's no practice mode. Maybe when DX comes out, um, I'll be able to go in there and see what, if I actually like the character's options or not. That's the only one, if I had to pick one. Every other one's garbage, in my opinion. Sorry. Sorry, Dark Rite lovers, Krogunk lovers. I don't know what the hell is wrong with you guys, but... Decidueye. There's not even, that's not even a question, just straight up Decidueye. I love the character design of Decidueye a lot. Um, and even then, back when like 1.5 was out, then I'm like, man, they need to release new DLC. Decidueye has got to be that character. And lo and behold, Decidueye. So I gotta, I gotta play that character. This, this is hard now. This wasn't hard when it was just the arcade characters, but Decidueye is giving Darkrai a run for, for the money right now because uh, I was really looking forward to playing Darkrai. I think a lot of people were, a lot of trap pl players, a lot of Chandelure players looking forward to playing some Darkrai. And uh, Decidueye shows up and I'm like, hmm. That character. And now I have to have an archer team in 3v3s. Gardevoir Decidueye is like guaranteed in that for sure. And now I want to throw Darkrai in there too. So I don't know. I couldn't tell you which one I want to play more. I got to go lab them. Like I'm going to become a lab monster again for sure once DX gets released. So I'll be able to give a better answer then. Right now, I'm just going to say I'm leaning towards, uh, I'm leaning towards Darkrai because of the initial the initial excitement that I had around him, but Decidueye is definitely up there. Does the new patch on Gengar count as a new character? So then I'm looking forward to playing the updated Gengar. Um, his entire kit, like different moves become viable. He gains a ton of new options. He actually becomes one of the strongest characters in the game, according to the Japanese players. Um, and that's just not, not just the Japanese players have been practicing this character for two and a half years now. That's, this character got buffed to a point where the mix-up game is so strong that there's not a whole lot you can do because it's that huge swing. Uh, apart from Gengar, uh, I'm really looking forward to playing out Krogunk, or trying out Krogunk. I very much enjoy his air mobility. I do have bad habits, um, but like regarding how I move in the air, um, and Krogunk is a character who because of how he moves in the air, uh, I'll be able to hopefully like weaken my bad habits, make them not as blatant because of just how strong he is in that element. Definitely looking forward to Empoleon. I haven't really had much experience with fighting games, but I always tend to gravitate towards characters with unique movement and stuff, so Empoleon's definitely an obvious, obvious pick because his normal walk speed is ridiculously bad, but you get all the slides in and stuff. He's got some pretty interesting movement tech, so that's going to be a lot of fun. I definitely really like the way Decidueye looks, and he, he just... Something about him, I'm like drawn. I don't understand why yet. Hopefully when I get my hands on him, I will, but Decidueye is gonna be pretty cool as well. Oh, it's tough. So I think I've watched a ton of Japanese footage, talked to Japanese community members like Majori and other people a lot. Um, it's tough. I, I don't wanna play, I don't wanna play a bad character anymore. I'm like, Suikun's not bad, but Suikun has his, his challenges. So they say Empoleon's top tier right now. I, I think he's gonna drop. I'm really, I'm intrigued by Darkrai um, and Decidueye. I think Decidueye looks really cool and he has tools that no one else has, which I'm interested in. Scizor or Darkrai? Out of, out of the new characters, Scizor or Darkrai? Um, out of the characters that are already in the game, I'm still planning on playing Mewtwo. Um, for 3v3s, I'm probably going to be making a team of Mewtwo, Suicune, and maybe Scizor. Um, I think that'll be a good like balanced team, but yeah, I'm, I'm very excited for all the new characters. I'm definitely going to try them all out. Pikachu and Weavile still. I don't, I don't really see myself deviating from those two. Uh, when I got the chance to actually play the game uh, at Evo, you know, I seen a lot of like, not like necessarily new things, but there, there was a lot more to work with, with uh, the changes that were made with uh, the characters and the assists and stuff like that. So. 
I feel like I'll have uh, a lot more fun than I do. I have a lot of fun now, but I feel like they're just gonna be like way better and a lot more fun now. Ah, in DX. I get this question a lot. People ask this a lot on my stream and stuff. And the answer is, I really like Chandelure. I really do. And even though all of the DX characters, I guess we don't call them DLC characters anymore, uh, the new characters look really cool, I don't plan on switching to any of them. However, what I am going to do is look forward to playing against them. Because every matchup that you play with your character against another character teaches you about your own character, right? Uh, like Charizard teaches you about Antios, you know? Gardevoir teaches you about like screen positioning, right? So every new character added to the game is still good for me, even if I don't play them, because as I play against them, it will be really good for me. And so I'm really looking forward to like learning more about the character that I already play through the new guys. Hashtag go to your locals. <laughs> Hi, Mom. I'm really thankful that the community is at a point where we're even doing this, where we're we're sitting down and recording and remembering that we do have history and that our history is interesting and important um, and meaningful and I appreciate that. Um, and I, I just am so thankful for you guys um, and for everyone, you know, just down the hall. We're at Defend the North in this room here who loves the game and wants to play it because I think it's a really cool, really fun way to, to express yourself um, and a really interesting way to challenge yourself like just as a person. Don't get discouraged. If you do well and then you don't do well, really don't get discouraged at all. Um, in fact, I mean, I made a tweet about this, but I'll still say it again. I went 0-2 at a hidden boss the week before the Defend the North that I won. So don't let just a bad tournament put you down because, you know, next week you can win a major. If you're getting frustrated with the game, uh, don't give up. There were points where I was very frustrated in my play, very frustrated in um, the game itself. I wasn't happy with my results. I wasn't happy with the game. I thought the game was just screwing me over. Don't get into that mindset. Just keep working at it. Um, keep looking forward and good things will come to you. And as long as you keep up the, the hard work and the work ethic, you'll just slowly build up and you'll, you'll get to the level you want to be at, I promise you. A lot of thank yous, really. Um, thank you to my parents who always watch the stream, and the rest of my family, all my brothers and sisters. Thank you to all of my stream monsters. You guys are the best. I definitely wouldn't be here without all of you. Thank you to Hazardous, obviously, who have also been vital in my growth these last couple months, and I'm looking forward to working with them. Thank you to the entire Pokémon community for giving me such a great game to play. If there's no community, then, then you can't really be a competitor, right? Pokémon Tournament is here to stay, so pick up the sticks. <laughs> I really hope uh, whoever's watching this, you know, they're able to take something from either myself, from anyone else who you guys have been interviewing, because everybody has some remark uh, that, you know, I might, I might say something and I don't think it means a whole lot, but then somebody listening out on the other end looks at that in a completely different perspective, and they're like, huh, I never thought about that. Let me try something new, uh, you know, let me see what I'm actually gaining from this, what I'm not gaining. So maybe they'll find something that they really love, maybe they'll find some things they don't like, but they're able to move on, uh, find something they do. If I can do it, anyone can do it. Like, play competitively at a high level. I've never been a part of any community before Pokin. Like, actually been, like, I've watched streams of, like, mostly Marvel, like, VODs back in the day of, like, YouTube. And then sometimes I watch, like, Street Fighter streams with my friends. And when Pokémon came out, I never thought I'd be at where I was today with, like, how, I mean, like, my knowledge behind it and, like, how skillful I am about it. And I never thought I'd be here. And I feel like if I can do it, then anyone can do it. And don't stop trying. And remember to always have fun. If it's not fun, you're not going to go far with it. Only thing I want to say is, for me, it probably took me a full year before I felt comfortable with playing the game, and I feel like I could take on anybody. It may seem easy on surface level, but in reality, it's a, it's a fighting game, and fighting games are hard. They're not supposed to be easy. If you like this game, and even if you're an avid Pokemon fan like I am, just stick with it, because it is an incredible experience, a fantastic community, and I can only see this, this game growing throughout the years. The love of my life, 
as sappy as it might be, she bought me the game twice because, yeah, because the first one broke. So she bought it for me again because she really, really wanted to play with me. Uh, she's been there every day since day one, supporting me, practicing with me, yelling at me when I don't anti her the jump in. Um, she's been crucial, so thank you. If you've never watched Pokémon before, or if you've never played Pokémon, give it a chance. Just test the waters, you know. If you love Pokémon as a kid but never tried Pokémon, give Pokémon a chance. Because the game is good. I don't sugarcoat anything. You know, the game, I believe the game is good. And we have good people and a good scene to help you. If, if it's your first fighting, first time ever touching a fighting game, period. You know, we, we can help you, you know, just become what you want to be in the game. So. But it won't, it won't matter if you don't give it a chance. So if you're watching this, I hope you realize that Pokin is a game that you can easily pick up, have fun with, play with your friends, play with your family, and really appreciate it. But it's not even just a game. We have a community full of great people here. We have an overabundance of like people that can help you out. Like, say if you're confused, like, I don't know what to do with this. you got plenty of Discord servers, you got plenty of chats, plenty of people on Twitter that you could easily just tweet at. You could even go to Mr. Pokin himself, my man Alistair, who is like the, the poster boy. People call him the poster boy. And that's, hey, that's cool. I, I appreciate that people call him that because that just means to me that we're making it, you know, we're, we're taking those steps towards being at that level of notoriety. I know for a fact Alistair is one of those dudes that has single-handedly learned other characters just so that he could build his scene over there in Kelly. Keep that in mind and it's not, not just him, it's a lot of people, myself included. I might not be as good but you know I will give my hand out if you reaching. That being said just keep that in mind. Pokken is not just a game, it's a family. There's a whole community here that just kind of showed up and spawned out of nowhere, right? People like myself who may have been more like, I was a loner, right? I was, I was a loner, I was like on my own, I was not necessarily the most social person. And just like finding these opportunities to become, a, become part of something else, become part of something bigger, especially when it's something that you enjoy, something that can be a hobby, something that you're passionate about. If there's something you're passionate about and there's a community around it, uh, I would say go for it, like whatever it is. It doesn't just have to be a fighting game. It doesn't have to be a game at all. It could be anything, right? If there's something you're passionate about and you see that there's other people who are passionate about it as well. It was hard for me to get into this, right? I was an introvert. I still am very introverted, but putting yourself out there is very important because you'll find that people will surprise you. And I think that's the most important thing is being open to putting yourself out there because you will find some very great people in the world. My name is uh, HB Oreo, uh, Kevin Menz. My main is Mewtwo in Pokémon. My name is Anthony Paratori. I play Garchomp. My tag is uh, Roxo. Roxo the Savage. My name is Liam Nelson. I play under the tag Hazardous Twixie. Martinez Harris. My gamer tag is Rustin Mew, and my Pokémon is Gardevoir. Uh, Steven Delgado, Coach Steve also. I play Weavile, Garchomp, and Pikachu. Uh, my name is Brendan Burnside Hanson. I p play Suicune. Uh, my name is Shippo, and I play Brakeson. My name, Michael Graff, aka H2. H2, who are you at Twitter? And I play Gardevoir in Pokémon Tournament. Mad Luck, I play Gengar, Pokémon. My name is Ryan Uchi Rojas. I am a Darkrai main. I play Shandy and I play Pokémon. My name is Andrew Whitey White Zaleski. My main is Pikachu Libre with a secondary in Machamp and soon to be Empoleon.
the least I cannot stand playing this weekend. Hashtag should have been Ente. Look at the red light. It's a huge red light. But today we have worlds, right? Hi. 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 What does that mean again? Yes. Okay. Which way do you think this hat should go? Like this? Like this. And sideways, you know. Like <laughs> <laughs> He's like, no, I don't care as long as I have my rice bowl. This place looks pretty lit. The freaking security chick, she felt my butt. I, I felt it. Really? She was definitely touching my butt. <laughs> 